all new novices, we're you know, still kind of shy and scared of things, but in this lecture, I want you to not be that. And I'm going to incentivize it. People who answer questions get a nice bag of either fruit snacks or some candy. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> candy in the morning. Okay. So, if I can do this thing. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So, who thinks they know what uh, counterplant you made? Yeah. It's a plan to counter the plan. You are exactly right. Thank you. What do you want? Fruit snacks or a candy? Oh, fruit snacks. All right. I'm going to chuckle, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't need a chuckle. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. So, yes, you're correct. A counter plan is basically just a counter to the plan that's been presented. We know the difference between the affirmative side and the negative side, right? Yes. yes. Good. Okay. So the counter plan is a negative argument. If you are on the affirmative side, do not touch your counterplan file. Don't read that. It's for the negative. So let's see. Uh, this counter plan is the counter advocacy. So it just means that whatever the affirmative plan is, you're just going to offer an alternative. It could be changing the actor, or it could be changing the time frame of the thing you're doing. Let's think about this as a, just a regular old example. Say I'm super, super hungry, and I'm like, okay, I want to go get some pizza. My friend is like, yeah, pizza's cool, but it's kind of greasy, I don't really like the meat. What about salads? So, I presented my plan, pizza. They presented their plan, salads. That's a counterplan. When they say that, oh, pizza is greasy, it's, and it's got meat, I don't really want any of that, they're writing a disadvantage to me getting pizza, right? So now, if it's just between us, how are we gonna figure out, okay, can we, um, how do we answer this? How do we solve this, this problem? Do we get the salads? Do we get the pizza? Well, does anybody have an idea? Yeah. You get both. Yes, exactly! You can get both of them. So later on we'll talk about that. That's called a permutation. You just compromise. You just take one thing over here, take one thing over there, smack them together, and then you have to explain why this is a better thing, but we'll get into that. So, comp the, a competitive alternative to the status quo and the app. So SQ, you'll see that pretty often throughout your debate career. SQ just stands for status quo. Anybody have an idea on what the status quo could be? Yes. Yes, that's what the status quo is. Candy or fruit snacks? Also, candy or fruit snacks? Uh, fruit snacks. Okay. Candy. Candy. Okay. Can I have my two interns pass, start passing out candy and fruit snacks to the people who are answering? Yep. <laughs> All right. So, why would you present a counter plan? Anybody have any ideas on that? Yes, although in fact. Um, you would maybe use the counter plan to, uh, to uh, show how like, their plan is terrible or how your plan is better. Yes, exactly that. Uh, was there another? Oh, no. Oh. So, you either are going to present a counter plan because the other team's plan is so bad that it's going to cause something uh, worse to happen. Or, it, you're just going to say that it can't solve for its impacts. Let's go back and think about the Taiwan app. Has anybody taken a look at it yet? No? Okay, that's okay. So, the app that you're going to be running during camp and for a little bit of a year is going to be about Taiwan. And basically, it's trying to solve for tensions between Taiwan and China. That's super, that's super complex, but I'm oversimplifying it. If the negative team says, hey, you don't solve for these tensions. You actually make them worse. Does that make the counter plan seem a little nicer now? If, if we're saying that the affirmative plan is making things worse? Okay, so let's talk about what makes a counter plan a counter plan. Part of that is competition. So the competition can take two different forms, but this is the first one, and I think one of the most important ones, right? It's called mutual exclusivity. A hand, what do we think mutual exclusivity means? 
Yes, you. The brush. Yep, you. Take a crack at it. What do you think? Uh, it's so mutual, so it's like in between people. I don't know. Um, kind of. And it's exclusively to you. You're almost there. It's good to, uh, good to break down the two words. So we have mutual, togetherness, working with that, exclusive. If it, it's excluding something, what, what are we doing? OK. Mutual exclusivity just means that we can't do the two plans at the exact same time. Think about it this way. If I say, I want to go get pizza at 8 AM, right? And you say that, no, I want you to take me to get ice cream at 8 AM. Can I do both of those things at 8 a.m.? I see some head shakes, good. You're right, I can't do two things at the exact same time. So getting ice cream and getting pizza are mutually exclusive in this example. So we can say that the plan texts are contradictory. So a plan text for your 1AC is telling you, uh, is telling you to stop selling arms to Taiwan. Just keep that in mind. If I say my counter plan is to continue selling arms to Taiwan, can I do both of those things at the same time? Exactly. I can't both stop selling arms and continue selling arms at the exact same time. So that's something that shows the competition. It shows how mutually exclusive your counter plan is to the 1AC. So the agents. What do we think agents means here? You mean like spies running around, shooting stuff, dodging bullets? No. Anybody want to take credit? Yes. Kind of like the factors that go into it? Almost. You're almost there. Think. What else can go into to making a plan? You have the, the thing that we're doing, but who makes the plan? Who makes the plan or what makes the plan? You, you said earlier, what makes the plan? I'm saying who makes the plan? The agent is the who. Oh, okay. So the agent would be like the people coming up with the plan. Basically, yes. So who are we acting through? If I say, in, in my example of getting pizza and ice cream at 8 a.m., I am the agent. I'm the one who is going to be doing these two things. If we're talking back to our debate example, if I'm talking about Taiwan and China and the U.S., those are my agents. So agent just means the, the actor, the, the person, the, the entity that we're going through that we're talking about. And so the last one is the actions are contradictory. This goes back to my example of the pizza and the ice cream. If I, I can't do both of these things at the same time. And all of these are examples of mutual exclusivity. You need to have a counter plan that is mutually exclusive, otherwise it's not competitive to the 1AC. And what this means again is that it's just, it, it doesn't compete. It either doesn't link to the, or it doesn't solve for the counter plan, the 1AC's, um, go back. The counter plan has to be mutually exclusive, it has to be competitive so that we can actually have a debate against each other. If I, if my conundrum, if my harm, my, my thing that's, that's going wrong right now is that I'm super duper hungry and my plan is to go get some food. If a friend says, instead of eating, actually, let's go shopping right now. Does that solve my problem of hunger? No. Exactly. So we have to make sure that we're focusing on solving for the the 1AC's um, harms and everything. So let's go into the net benefits. This one can be kind of tricky, but for, for the novices, you guys have one net benefit. So it's super, super easy. You have one counter plan, one net benefit. They go together, you always read them together, and they, they complement each other. So we can say that the net benefit, uh, an internal net benefit, is trying to take the advantages that are inside the 1AC and you make them go against the 1AC. You say, actually, you don't solve for that thing. You make it worse. Can anybody give me an example of some, somebody trying to solve something and them making it worse? Yeah. Um, the school lunch is terrible, so then you stop eating. Yeah. So bad school lunches make, uh, make kids not want to eat that, uh, eat that school lunch. So let's see. So for your Taiwan app, you actually have an advantage. You have two of them. 
In your labs, you'll be going over them more in depth, so you'll be able to break them down and understand them. But for this purpose, I just took one of the advantages. And it was a military advantage. So basically what it was saying is that if we don't immediately stop selling arms to China, or to Taiwan, sorry, China will be very upset with us, and they will attack us. That's the argument, okay? So if on the negative side, I say, hey, I have a counter plan. I have an alternative way that we can solve for this. It's going to make everything much better. Then on the affirmative side, when you say, it, excuse me, on the affirmative side, when you say, we're solving for this, the negative counter plan says, no, you're not solving for this thing. You're actually making it worse. By stopping to sell these arms to China, everybody's going to be upset. China's not going to be upset. We have an alternative, right? Um, and then we need to go on to the external DAs. An exter uh, DISAD. Have you heard the word DISAD yet? Anybody who's heard of the word, do you want to take a crack at what it might mean in terms of debate and arguments? Yeah. Disadvantage. Disadvantage, yes. What do you think that means in terms of, in relation of debate? Um, um, like, think about it this way. Yeah, bad things that can happen. So on the negative team, if I hear your affirmative and I say, no, you can't do that because of X, Y, and Z reason, those X, Y, and Z reasons are my disadvantages to doing that plan. Going back to the beginning when my friend said, no, I don't want pizza because it's greasy and it's meat and I don't like meat, those are two disadvantages to getting pizza at that moment, which is why that friend offers salads instead. There are two disadvantages to getting pizza. There are no disadvantages to getting salad. So salad, theoretically, would be the better option, right? Um, so, Hegemony, if you were in my lab yesterday, we went over this word. But somebody who is not in my lab, do you want to take a crack at what hegemony can mean? Yes. It's global leadership, right? Yes. Woo, global influence and leadership. Candies or fruit snacks? Fruit snacks. <laughs> Okay, so hegemony, global leadership, and influence. Why do you think global leadership and influence would be important? Yes. Power. Power, yeah. What else? What, why would it be important that we have influence and power over other countries or other people? Yeah. Gets heard more. You get heard more, yeah, that's important. And why would we get getting heard more on an international scale be a good thing? Because like everyone would take it seriously. Mm -hmm. So if you're taken seriously, then what does that mean? People start taking action. Yeah, you can get actions done. You can get, you can accomplish things internationally, right? So hegemony can be important for uh, many countries, not just the U.S. or not just um, developed or or developed or countries of that caliber. Um, so here's a small exercise for us. Elon Musk should give Amber a small gift of one million dollars. That is my plan, right? Somebody presents a counter plan. Elon Musk should give Amber a small gift of four million dollars, right? Okay, is this counter plan competitive? Remember what we talked about with competition and how it has to be mutually exclusive and have a net benefit? Yes. It's not benefiting the plan even more. There we go. It, it's just adding on to it. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change, um, the, besides changing the amount, it doesn't offer any extra insight. Good job. We get some candies or fruit snacks. Okay, so this is the second exercise. I'm gonna pick somebody. You're gonna come up with a plan. I'm gonna pick somebody else. They're gonna come up with a counter plan and we're gonna see if it's competitive, okay? So let's go with, yes, create a plan for me. by one dollar to make chairs more beautiful. Okay, we should raise taxes by one dollar to make chairs more beautiful. Now we need a counter plan. Um, no. How about <laughs> from you with the glasses, sorry. <laughs> now, we want to raise one dollar, raise taxes by one dollar to beautify the chairs. Do you have a counter plan for that? I wish to raise 
two dollars to beautify tables. Okay, we should raise two dollars to beautify tables. Is that a competitive counter plan? No. No. All right. Okay. Do you want to give it another crack? No. Okay. So you want to give a counter plan? Yes. Um, to respond to that one. So a response to we're going to raise taxes by a dollar to beautify chairs. Well, we could raise taxes by a dollar for school supplies. Okay, so this is a, their counter plan was we should raise taxes by a dollar for school supplies. Instead of taking money and, and beautifying chairs with it, we're changing the action and now we're going to beautify art supplies. Or sorry, not beautify, but we're going to invest in art supplies. Is this a competitive counterplan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see some confused looks. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's competitive because now we can we can change. We've changed a little bit, but let's test it again. So, do you think that we can do both of these things at the same time? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, that's something a little bit separate though. If, if we just wanted to mix these two things, if we wanted to say, take your $1 increase in taxes and now we're going to put it in art supplies and beautifying chairs, is your counter plan now, um, now competitive? No. Yes, that's correct. If we can do both the affirmative plan and the counter plan at the same time, it means that it's not competitive. So. It passed the first test of, are we changing an action or an agent? But it didn't pass the second test of, can it be mutually, ex or is it mutually exclusive? So, good job. Yes. I think that would count. Okay, so tell me. We shouldn't raise taxes at a dollar because that will cause more people to go in poverty or in debt, than the encounter is useless. Yes. Wow, fantastic. Let's get some extra candy and or fruit snacks. Both? Yes. Oh. So what you presented is both a disad and to, to doing it. Beautifying chairs is useless and people are gonna go into poverty. And you've, you've altered, well, you've basically just given us a net benefit to not doing the plan. So if we added that, those arguments onto the counter plan that was almost mutually exclusive, let's see if we can edit it a little more. Let's see, what if we, we're raising a dollar to beautify the chair, raising taxes by a dollar to beautify the chair. The counter plan, let's go with, we're raising a dollar, and yours was raise a dollar, or don't raise taxes at all. Yes, okay, so now our counter plan is don't raise taxes at all because it's a waste of money, so that's your first is ad. And, or, yeah, waste, beautifying, beautifying chairs is useless. And secondly, people go into poverty. Now there are two disadvantages to doing the plan. These are the net benefits. These make the counter plan of not doing anything seem much better now, right? Uh, so good job on that exercise. Does anybody have any questions though? Do we need to clarify anything? Was that a thing? No. If you have anything that you need clarified, please ask me. This is definitely the time to do it. So let's go on to counter plans on the neg. How are you supposed to win, uh, win a counter plan? Basically, all you're doing is proving that the counter plan and the net benefit, so the disads that you add, are better than just doing the plan. We don't have, uh, so you can do this by going for their solvency. What does solvency mean? Anybody want to take a crack? If there's a hint, yeah. The solution. Basically, it, it's the theory of how you're going to solve for your plan. The 1AC talks about military advantages. Um, like China is, is going, oops, sorry. China is going to be upset with us if we continue to push towards um, or give arms to Taiwan. You can say on this, the solvency, you can say, actually, that's not going to happen. That's one of the most common types of sol solvency arguments. Um, I can hear you all clear padding and typing. I'm going to be sending this, this 
uh, lecture to all of your lab leaders. So don't worry, you'll be able to talk about it in your lab if you have questions to do there. So let's. Okay, so you don't have to write this down because you have this in your files already. You'll be able to see it when you get the counterplan file given to you. Um, but basically, it's, it's the only difference between. Yes. When you're running the counterplan, especially this one, specifically this one, uh, think about it this way. How did we change this from the, the 1AC? So basically we're going to be breaking, uh, we're going to change the amount that we're sending and we're going to make the arms for defensive sales instead of offensive, right? So the, in the 1AC, you just have, we're going to stop arm sales. The counter plan says, actually, we're not going to stop arm sales. We're just going to modify the way we sell to Taiwan. We still get to do, uh, we still get to do things. Um, but now, instead of the impacts from the 1AC being a, uh, now instead of the impacts from the 1AC only, we have to deal with the impacts that the the counter plan is going to bring forth. So let's look at this strap. I'm going to do it. It's another exercise on finding the competitiveness. So the affirmative is Taiwan. That's the, the affirmative that you have. The counter plan is reform. That's the one counter plan that you have, and its net benefit is hegemony. So remember, we went back and we said that hegemony is the influence and the dominance you have on the international scale. Basically, what this is saying is that if we don't continue to sell arms to Taiwan, it's going to mess with our hegemony. Our hegemony is going to go down instead. And remember, over here, we talked about what happens when we can't, um, when we have influence over people, and these things get done, we get heard, things happen, right? If we don't have that hegemony, that means that we don't have that influence over people. We can't get things done. Say we needed, um, say we needed help overseas. If we don't have that hegemony, that that influence, we're less likely to get the help that we needed. So, if um, this is a lot of reading, just know that this is the competitive strategy. This for if you're running Neg, if you're at the end of the tournament, we're going to do a cute little debate. If you're on the Neg. This is what you should be running. Just reform CP, the hege he hegemony decide. Um, so have, has anybody looked at the format of a debate yet? The, the, the 1AC, the, the 2AC? OK. So the 2NC is the second negative, right? In this speech, you, are, you have already given all of your, your offense. You've already read that in the 1NC. This speech is for extending all of that stuff and then making it even more powerful. So what you want to do here is, what is your CP doing? You have to be able to explain how the counter plan is different from the affirmative plan. If you can't explain the differences between the two, though, that's when the judge will get confused, and your other teammates can get confused, and you can get confused. It's all a very messy thing. So at the very basics, you have to be able to explain how your counter plan does something different from the affirmative plan. Then the next step is, okay, cool, it's different, but how does it solve for anything that the 1AC presented? If the 1AC said, uh, if I say that I'm hungry and you say I want to go shopping and not solve my hunger problem, then what are we left with? Now I'm hungry and upset that I'm shopping with somebody, right? There are more disadvantages to not, uh, to, to not solving uh, for all of the app. So the next one is, why does the net benefit act as an extra reason to vote for the counter plan? If my friend doesn't like, or if my friend is a vegetarian and doesn't like meat on their pizza, then that's an extra reason not to get pizza because it would exclude them and they would, their feelings would be hurt and et cetera, et cetera, right? So the affirmative team, they have what's called answers to in their files. So they're going to answer all of your counter plan arguments. They're going to have different types of arguments against it. And you have to answer those things. If you don't answer them, then you'll lose, right? So if, make sure to focus on the hegemony disad. If there are arguments on that, answer them, go through them, and prove, like, support, support the disad. In general, a counter plan without a, a, without a net benefit is basically useless. It's, it's just another disad at that point. You need to have that extra oomph 
that extra boost to make your plan, make your team seem more viable, seem more interesting, etc. So, okay, now movement break. I just want everybody to stand up in their in their seats in their area and just like do some little stretches. Get the blood flowing again. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Look at the intern. Go on, stand up. Just just a few. Just yeah, come on. Oh, say less. Alright. Yeah, wake up a little, get the blood flowing again. Everyone stand up. Two seconds. You know, we're actually gonna do this. Come on. We can do it. Stretch us in. Alright, y'all need to stand up. Y'all need to participate for this to work, okay? Are you guys trying to decide who's gonna do it? Alright, Okay, never mind. Just do we have the blood flowing again? Oh there you go. Oh wait. There we go. Alright, so now we kind of know why we would throw a counter plan and how, how to support its net benefit, but what about on the affirmative side? So, so on the affirmative, you have two types of, of arguments you can make. You can make offensive arguments, which just says, like, the CP links to the, the advantages, or the, sorry, the CP links to the disad, and that's a bad thing. You'll have to explain why that's a bad thing, how it links, and your cards can help you do that. They are there to help support you. Um, so you can also do a test. Remember when we did a test to see if the, the counter plans you were making were competitive? Another way to test that is by the permutation. Can we do both of these things at the same time? If we can, then your counter plan is not competitive. Why are you running it against us? Let's move on. We have other arguments to, to answer, right? Um, so you can also talk about how it's solved, or how it's going back to its solvency. If you're telling the judge in the back of the room that the counter plan cannot solve for all of your plan, that's important, right? You need to be able to tell them, hey, they can solve for some of our plan, but not all of it, and then you have to explain why that part that they don't solve for is important. You can't just leave it at, judge, they don't solve the thing. Okay, that's fine. Okay, cool. But like, what aren't they solving? Why can't they solve it? Why can you uniquely solve it? Does that make sense? Um, so you should think about the scope of the counter plan versus the scope of your plan, and the agent the counter plan is using versus the agent that you're using. These are all things to take into account. You can make a comparison and a contrast of, of the counter plan and the affirmative plan. I will tell you that in this case, the, the CP and the app that you're going to be running are basically the same thing. They have a slight nuance to them, and that's for you in the debate to kind of flush out, to discover, to, to figure out the best way to prove that they do not solve. So we briefly talked about them earlier, the permutation, the compromise between thing A and thing B to create thing C, right? So it is a direct refutation against the counter plan, and it's one of the best and easiest ways to test the competition. If you can make a perm, the counter plan is not competitive, right? So they can be unfair. When you get into higher levels of debate, you'll be able to expand on that a little bit. But for right now, just know that the, any perm that, or most perms that you're going to run or that somebody's going to tell you to run here, they will be fine. You're okay. Uh, so this is super, super important, and which is why it's bolded, but the perm is only a theoretical test of competition. The question of if and not how. So it, when we're talking about, going back to the example of pizza, my pizza and my friend's salad, if I say, okay, perm, let's get pizza and salad, it doesn't matter if we can't figure out where the pizza and the salad is, right? There are, one, places like that exist, you just get a combo or something. But it's just a theoretical, it's an if. If I can do these things simultaneously, they cannot be mutually exclusive. And if they're not mutually exclusive, they're not competitive. They can still be a threat against your 1AC, but they're not nearly as scary now because you understand that the counter plan is just doing your plan. They're just, they've just stolen all of your plan and now they're changing just little bits of it, basically. Um, so, in, the, in your counter plan file, you don't have uh, a permutation, but you should 100% ask your lab leaders, hey, 
can we make one as a lab? Can we talk about what would be a good permutation and how it would work with both this counterplan and this app? Um, so here are two types that I, I like. It's do both and do the plan, then the counterplan. So what do we think do both means? It's on the board. Uh, how about on the end here? Um, do the plan the Exclude the part of the CP? Yes. So what do you think that means? So, to, um, can you say it like, to restate your plan? Sort of. Um, yeah, you're on the right track. Anybody else want to take a, take a hit? Okay. So, do the plan and the not mutually exclusive parts. It just means do the parts of the plan that can be done together. In this case, my perm that I gave my friend is a do both perm. I, I told them, fine, let's get pizza and salad so that both of us are happy. It means that we would have to find a place that serves both pizza and salad, but it can be done. So it is a do both perm. What about perm do the plan, then the CP? What do we think that one means? What about on this side of the room? Any of you three in that back? Jill, you want to go? Yes, exactly. You are just messing with the timing of the counter plan and the affirmative. I, ideally, you keep your plan first. Because in the debate, your 1AC, your case, the thing you're advocating for, is the most important thing in the round. Otherwise, why are we debating, right? So do the plan first, and then do the counter plan later. Get pizza first, then go get some salad. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're basically at the end. Ooh. But without really looking at that slide, who thinks we can they can give a, a nice summary of what a counter plan does? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what does a counter plan do? Um, it contradicts the affirmative plan. Sort of, yeah. It's a, it's a counter advocacy. So it it just says instead of doing the plan, let's do this thing instead. Okay. What about a net benefit? You know the net benefit. Okay. So the net benefit is the reason why we are doing the counter plan instead of the one AC. So. We don't go. We don't go get pizza only because my friend is vegetarian and they're going to need a salad instead. Instead, uh, so their plan is: we want salads instead of getting pizza. We're going to go get salad. That's their counter plan. The net benefit to that, the reason why we shouldn't just get pizza, is because pizza is greasy and because pizza is has meat on it and they can't eat meat. Those are the net benefits of the counter plan. What about mutual exclusivity? Who wants to explain that one? Yes. Nope, you. Who do you think? Yeah, you. Um, like you chose. Um, um, Go for it, you got this. I, I don't know. Um, it's not on this one. Yeah. Like, what is it about or something like that? Or yeah, just what, tell me what you know about mutual exclusivity. Can I think we're looking at Yes, go ahead, I'll come back to you. Yeah. 
does anybody else want to give a crack at what mutual exclusivity is? Yeah. That we can do it at the same time? Yes, we can't do the thing at the same time. So that makes it mutually exclusive. If, it comp if a counter plan is mutually exclusive, that's a good thing. They need to be mutually exclusive because that protects them from those compromises of doing both or doing one thing and then the other thing. Okay, so this is just a summary slide of what we've just gone over. If you take anything else away from this, this lecture, just get these things. The counter plan is a counter advocacy to the affirmative plan, but it needs to do something more than the plan, right? It has to have a net benefit. It has to have a reason why the judge should prefer doing that action instead of doing the affirmative. If you can explain to your judge why your version or why what you're doing is either more safe, makes more money, uh, affects more people, anything like that, you're gonna you're gonna do well. Um, you also need to attack the counter plan if you're affirmative. Going to the affirmative now. If you have a counter plan right against you, you need to attack its solvency, and you need to attack its mutually mutual exclusivity. So you can do this by perming. Remember the perm. Perm is just a compromise of both things. I'm going to do thing A, I'm going to do thing B, it's going to produce thing C. Okay? Now, does anybody need anything clarified? There are many confused faces in the audience. If you prefer to come up uh, individually or at a later time, even within the camp, that's perfectly fine. I've got the violin green and blue hair. You can't miss me. So uh, in your labs, I firmly recommend asking questions about counter plans and especially about net benefits. Pay close attention to how a net benefit makes a counter plan sound better than the affirmative plan. That's the thing we're going to focus on, okay? All right, so thank you for being attentive and for interacting with this lecture. It's been a pleasure. If you have questions again, come see me, come see any of the staff. We're here for you. Thank you.